Welcome to Sky Sweaty Record Review, episode 60, the only new music review show hosted by a French professor immediately after getting out of the gym. Now, today's a little bit of a different episode. Um, I'm going to be reviewing a single, which makes sense because I had kind of a short workout today. And just so you know, I'm releasing a lot of videos these days, so I, I really am a, a professor, and uh, it's still my winter break, so I have too much time. I should be working on an article or preparing my classes, but I have way more fun doing these videos, so there you go. Um, so, in my short workout today, I decided to work on a single, and that's the new single by Radiohead, Ill Wind. Um, I listened to it probably 15 times in the course of my workout, uh, over and over again. I think it's important to do this and not wait for a new Radiohead album, because I consider Radiohead to be a part of the sort of, what I consider to be the holy trinity of artists working today, uh, Kanye, Radiohead, and Daft Punk. Basically, anytime they release anything, even a scrap of something, I think it deserves a lot of respect, a lot of time, a lot of energy, because I think they're the most vital and interesting people out there. Now, of course, that sounds like, you know, I could have said that 10 years ago as well, so maybe I'm a little bit outdated. That's part of why I do this show. I'm hopefully going to discover new things. Um, I think Kendrick Lamar is pretty close there. And to be honest, 21 Pilots might get there eventually but that's pretty controversial because they're so pop, but man, I really like them. Anyway, Radiohead, Ill Wind. Uh, the first thing I have to say is that you need these, not Apple brand, I don't even, I think these are Apple brand. You need stereo headphones for this song. Uh, I've been struggling like hell. Uh, I keep losing my headphones and the ones that I have are usually broken and only one channel works. And that doesn't work particularly nicely for a music review show. Um, if you have one channel broken on your headphones, don't listen to Ill Wind. And I say that as kind of a cute way of saying this is a very, very well-produced song, very consciously produced in two different channels, left and right. And I'm going to go over that as I, as I talk about the song. Listening to it so many times, I think that it's, it's kind of a journey song. I don't mean the band journey. <laughs> that would be a weird insult. Um, I mean, it's like you start one place and you end another, but it's not a particularly like energetic journey. Your, your heartbeat's never racing. You're never like, where am I? I didn't expect this. There's very little unexpected in this, but there's a subtlety and a development to the song, which is quite pleasant. I believe that you could very easily divide this up into five distinctive sections. And I'm going to go through each section of the song. And if you've heard it, I mean, listen to it now, okay? Like, it's not that hard to find. It's on all Spotify and Apple Music and all that stuff and Tidal, which is what I listen to. Um, listen to the song before you listen to me talk. Okay, now you're back. Uh, you may want to listen to it again. Okay, now you're back. You can listen to it again at the end. Um, there's five parts, I think, and each part is interesting. Uh, it begins immediately with, like, a drum intro. And that's kind of announcing what the song is going to be. Uh, Phil Selway, the drummer, is one of the greatest working drummers in music. Uh, since around 2000, he hasn't really been able to do everything that he wants because Tom York and the rest of the band have taken everything so electronic. But he's been patient. And every once in a while, he gets a chance to really play. And this song is a drum-based song. It's a beautifully syncopated drum beat, almost a jazz, I mean, no, it is a jazz drum beat. And the song begins and it has this bass and it has this guitar. And so the first part of the song contains the beginning of the vocals. And this is a song that has vocals and has lyrics. But I would put it in the category of Radiohead's instrumental songs. Because Tom York is on, I wouldn't say, okay, lyrically, he's on Tom York autopilot. Okay, and I love Tom York, but he has an autopilot in his lyrics where he takes some saying or dictum or cliche and repeats it enough with a spooky enough dead eyed voice that you start to like Im impose other meaning on that term. In this case, it's ill wind, no harm will come, this vague twisting of cliche to create an unsettling effect. But the way that he sings it really is just an extension of the instruments. These long, extended, you know, I mean, I can't, okay, I can't sing like Tom York either, but just these really long, extended out words to the point where 
it almost seems like it doesn't matter what he's saying. It's like listening to an opera in a language you don't speak, you know? So as this starts, this first part, um, one thing I did was I listened to the song with just one ear and then just with the other. And there's actually uh, no guitar in the right ear of this, of this beginning. So that's pretty interesting. So if you listen to it carefully, the right side is really this bass and drums, just rhythmic pounding. With the, with, the, with the guitar doing these very individual notes, do, 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 just that in your left wing. Left wing, am I watching hockey? Left ear. <laughs> no production, no editing, okay. And then there's an introduction to the second part. Phil, the drummer, goes kick, 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 kick. So I, I believe he's just taking the, 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 the drumstick and hitting it on the rim of the snare. And the second that he does that, all of a sudden, this guitar comes in, in the left ear. And what it does is beautiful. And this is why Radiohead, their production, their production rivals their songwriting and their songwriting is great. That's what makes them such an amazing band. Because this, it's this feedback guitar that perfectly matches Tom York's voice. A very high wail. And it's what creates this amazing atmosphere that Radiohead seems to create at will this really eerie, uncomfortable atmosphere, which the song is called Ill Wind, and it sounds like a howl. Howling wind? I don't know. Too far? Too cute? Radiohead tries not to be cute. But do they? I think Radiohead actually is a lot cuter than people think, but that's for a whole other video. So in this second part, uh, the, uh, it has this nice echoing of the sound, and then that leads us to the third part. The third part is completely instrumental, and it becomes, all of a sudden, keyboards start coming in. The thing about Radiohead is they're constantly pushing back and forth between the instru like acoustic music and electronic music, automatic music and organic music, just this constant push and pull. Since OK Computer, just, and, you know, since way back in the day, when everyone thought they were good with the bends, and they got bad after that, and all the, all the theories about what makes Radiohead good and bad, it seems to be pretty conscious on this song. So the third part is this, this keyboard keeps coming in. First, this kind of like winding, twisting, rising keyboard. Okay, kind of like that, where it seems to be kind of modular around like one note, and then that note tends to go up. And then it's joined, like these little individual notes, by these like chords played by like, I don't know, a Casio or intentionally sent like, crude sounding electronic, ding, 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 do, 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 do. So it's a really nice mixture between chords and individual notes. It modulates or changes key or something unsettling in this third part. And then the fourth part comes in and yet another echoed feedback of the voice. And in this, some of the, it's essentially a direct copy of part two with some of these synthesizer elements added in. And then the fifth part is the outro, in which all of those keyboard layers come back, all of the organic instruments leave, and it's just keyboard. So what ended up happening is they created a symmetrical song. And I, I could be wrong, by the way, and I don't know. This is just five, ten listens to the song. Actually, I am curious. If you're, like, super smart, uh, let me know if you see this, too. I feel like there's these five parts. So it starts with something really organic, the drums and guitar, and then the keyboard comes in and singing, and then all synthesizers, and then synthesizers and organic, and then ends with all synthesizers. So that there's, a, there's the intro and outro, it goes from organic to electronic, and then in the middle, there's this kind of interplay between them, and then at the very dead center is this part where it becomes so electronic that even the drums are taken out. There's like a 30 second part of the song where there's just no drums at all. Man, I love Radiohead. <laughs> it's really exciting. Um, I might be going too far. I might have also just watched A Good Place, which has a lot of jokes about wind chimes. But I sort of wonder if at the end, the do 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 isn't supposed to be echoing kind of a wind chime, that the feedback can be the wind and those keyboards can be the wind chimes probably too far. So that's the end of this whole journey. The first time I listened to it, I was like, okay, it's fine. 
But it reminded me of another Radiohead song. And this is going to go lead into a little bit of a Radiohead story. So the first time I saw Radiohead was in 1995. And, you know, that's one of my early concert stories. You know, I saw Nirvana and Jerry Garcia band in the same week and, you know, sort of, ha, ha, I'm such a music dude, you know. Um, but, you know, I saw Radiohead in 95 in the Benz tour in a little club in Boston. And, you know, that's like my, oh, man, I'm so cool. But that's the worst Radiohead concert I've ever seen. I mean, I've seen them like five times since then. The best one I ever saw was at a dog track in Boston in 2001. They keep getting better. There's not some secret, authentic time where they were really the best. Like, they're just an awesome, living band. And I tell that story to people not to say, oh, I liked them before they were cool, but after they were not cool, but before they became cool again, but just to say, don't be stupid. Go see a Radiohead concert. And at that show in 2001, the song that blew my mind, just completely, I was just losing my mind. I've never enjoyed, I think, a performance ever as much as I enjoyed the song Dollars and Cents at the 2001 concert at Suffolk Downs in Boston. I mean, if you're a Radiohead fan, Dollars and Cents almost feels like a filler. Like, ugh, it's not, it's just whatever, Tom complaining about money. But this song, Ill Wind, I think... Well, I know. You play it back to back, it's like a sequel to Dollars and Cents. It has that kind of rushing drums, the kind of nice layered and textured, the sort of instrumental, not instrumental part. So I am extremely excited to see Ill Wind in concert. I think it will have that same effect of just kind of coming alive and the band sinking and linking in ways that are unexpected. So it's the new Dollars and Cents for all you Super Radiohead fans. This is not new. They are not breaking new ground on this song. You know, Radiohead usually tries to do something brand new. This would fit fine on Moonshaped Pool. But, good lord, they keep making great music. They keep making interesting music. It may not be new ground, but it is an ex excellent example of what they do and what they know how to do. Create ornate, interesting, unsettling, well-produced, well-written songs that will translate very well to a concert and leave you with that feeling that you are listening to artists at the top of their game. So they may have some kind of comfort, but they have not done that at the expense of quality. My last note about, about Radiohead, um, it's almost the 10 year anniversary of my most successful YouTube video. It's on a different channel and I'll put it in the links. Um, it's my son and I playing Weird Fishes. Uh, so I play on guitar and he sings it except he was two years old at the time. That was the first time I was ever accused of being a hipster. Would not be the last. Anyways, it's kind of fun if you want to see a two-year-old sing Weird Fishes. All right, uh, so I'll probably record another video tomorrow because I still have all this time and I, don't, I just don't want to work on my article. Eh. All right, until then, there's the camera.